Okay, so today we are talking about gram staining, which is one of the most commonly used microbiological staining procedure in diagnostic lab and in research field. Now, gram staining was given by Hans Christian Gram in 1884 and it is called as differential staining. Now, why is it called as differential staining? Because it differentiates bacteria into two categories, either gram positive or gram negative. And this gram positive or gram negative is the ability of the bacteria to retain one particular state. Now the factor that makes a bacteria either gram positive or gram negative is bacterial cell wall. It is the cell wall of the bacteria, the structural difference between these two categories that makes it either gram positive or gram negative. So let's see first the difference between the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So here is the difference between these two types of bacteria. See, you can see gram positive and gram negative, both, uh, both the bacteria has the cell membrane and a peptidoglycan layer, that is the common thing, okay? But the peptidoglycan layer over here is really thick and in gram negative it is really thin. If it is 80% over here in gram positive, it is only 10% in gram negative. The next important thing that you can see over here is, there is one more structural appearance in gram negative. That is an additional outer cell membrane which is absent in gram positive. Let's zoom in and see. Gram positive bacteria has a lipid bilayer and it has a really thick peptidoglycan layer. Okay. Now this peptidoglycan layer is anchored to this lipid bilayer by lipotechoic acid. Okay, lipotechoic acid really holds this peptidoglycan uh, by attaching to the lipid of lipid bilayer. Whereas in case of gram negative, there is of course a cell membrane, there is of course a peptidoglycan cell wall, but there is additional cell membrane which is present over here. So there is inner cell membrane, a very thin layer of peptidoglycan and again there is one more outer membrane. And what is a different thing over here is peptidoglycan is not attached to the inner membrane but it is attached to the outer membrane and this outer membrane is very much rich in lipopolysaccharide okay on the uh, lipid mo moiety there it is very much rich in lipopolysaccharide uh, lipopolysaccharide is nothing but um, you know endotoxin that is what is your lipopolysaccharide so this lps is present only in gram negative bacteria so now we will see that how this difference in the cell wall helps the bacteria stain differently. Okay, so let's start with our staining procedure. The first thing that we do is take the bacterial sample and make a smear on the slide and heat fix this bacteria on the slide. The first thing that we will add here is the primary stain crystal violet. So crystal violet blue in color. So I am showing the molecules here, crystal violet molecules in both gram positive and gram negative what will happen this crystal violet will pass through the peptidoglycan cell membrane and go inside this cell same thing will happen with gram negative this crystal violet will cross the outer membrane then peptidoglycan then the inner membrane and go inside the cell the second thing we will add is iodine now why we are adding iodine because iodine acts as mordant. Mordant is nothing but something which is going to fix your dye in the cell. Okay? And how it works? Because your crystal violet is positively charged molecule. Okay? Positively charged dye. Whereas iodine is negatively charged. So what will happen? Iodine and crystal violet can easily make complex because one is positively charged, one is negatively charged. So now when you add iodine, Iodine will also pass through the cell membrane, cell wall and cell membrane and make complex with crystal violet, okay, something like this. The resultant complex is now bigger in size than either of the molecule individually. Same thing might have happened in case of gram negative also. There will be a complex formation between crystal violet and iodine. Now this complex is called as CVI complex crystal violet iodine complex. Now next thing we are going to add is alcohol and alcohol is going to act as our decolorizing agent. 
Now we know that lipid molecules get dissolved in alcohol. And in case of gram-negative bacteria, we saw that it is very much rich in the lipopolysaccharide molecules. It has a rich lipid moiety on it. So what will happen when you add alcohol? It is going to dissolve the outer membrane. Okay, as a result, we will not have this outer membrane. It will be dissolved. And it will be left with very thin layer of peptidoglycan layer. What happens in case of gram positive? There is no outer membrane. There is no lipid molecule. So alcohol is not going to disrupt this peptidoglycan, which is really thick. Now what will happen as you wash the slide with alcohol? In case of gram positive bacteria, there is still a peptidoglycan layer. Now here imagine peptidoglycan layer, which is really thick as a network of some net kind of a structure, you know, there are a lot of peptidoglycan cross-linked molecules, something like this. And your crystal violet iodine complex, which is formed over here, will not be able to cross this because the resultant complex is really large molecule and there is a thick layer of peptidoglycan. So it will get trapped inside this net. Okay, the CDR complex will be trapped inside the gram-positive bacteria. But in case of gram-negative bacteria, because of alcohol, the lipid molecules are dissolved, your outer membrane is dissolved. And the remaining peptidoglycan is not thick enough, is not strong enough to hold this CVI complex. So the alcohol wash will leach out the CVI complex from the gram-negative cell. Now at this point, if we see the slide in the microscope, all we can see is the gram-positive bacteria. We can't see gram-negative because they are colorless. So next we are going to add sephronin, that is our counter stain. So what will happen when we add sephronin? Suppose this is my sephronin, it is red in color. If I add in both, now there is no outer membrane, so let's remove this. So we have added sephronin now. That will also enter over here in gram positive and also in gram negative. Now what will happen? This gram negative bacteria is colorless so it can easily take up the sephronin in stain and will be colored as pink. What happens in gram positive? It is not that the secondary stain does not enter. Secondary stain will of course enter in the gram positive bacteria also but since it is colored in blue which is comparatively darker color than red it is going to mask the color of secondary stain. It is something like I'm wearing black color coat today. I'm having a sandwich and I drop a sauce on my coat. I will not be able to see, right? Because the black color masks the red color of the sauce. Same thing happens. But in case of gram negative bacteria, imagine me wearing white color coat, eating sandwich, dropping sauce. It's white color, so easily I can see the red color. So that is why you are not seeing a red color in case of gram positive, it already has a darker color primary state. So at the end when you observe your slide, this is what you observe under microscope. Gram positive bacteria is purple in color because of combination of fistulolet and iodine. Gram negative bacteria because it has taken sephronin, it will be colored either pink or red. So that's how it works, gram positive has a uh, cell membrane and thick layer of peptidoglycan whereas gram negative has cell membrane, thin layer of peptidoglycan and outer membrane. Outer membrane is rich in lipopolysaccharide when you stain these two bacteria. Both the bacteria will take crystal violet. You add iodine, it is going to fix the crystal violet. Then you add your uh, decolorizing agent that is alcohol. Because the gram negative bacteria has lots of lipopolysaccharide in the outer membrane that will get dissolved and the remaining peptidoglycan cannot hold this crystal violet iodine complex so it will leach out whereas in case of gram positive this CVI complex will get trapped in the peptidoglycan layer. Next you add your secondary uh, stain that is sephronin so the colorless gram negative bacteria will take it up and will appear as pink under the microscope. So you have gram positive which is purple in color and gram negative which is pink in color at the end of the stain. That's all for today. Hope you understood the topic. Do subscribe to the channel for new video every Friday.